Welcome back to Exceptional Talk with Dr. Clark. Today, I have a very interesting guest for you today. I have Mr. Lance Bennett. Uh, Mr. Lance Bennett, thank you so much for joining me today. I'm going to read a little bit of your bio, but I'm not going to read all of it. And I'm going to allow you to have an opportunity to kind of chime in on some of it, okay? Absolutely. All right. So uh, he's a principal uh, at a K-12 school, the owner of a freelance I ideal consulting services, LLC. Um, Mr. Bennett stands at the intersection of education and entrepreneurship with a rich background that spans across various industries, including retail, food service, mm -hmm. and corporate training. And Mr. Lance uh, Bennett brings a wealth of experience to both roles. So I'm going to give him an opportunity to talk to you all about educational leadership, business acumen, and then the diverse experience. And of course, he has some community engagement. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for this opportunity, Dr. Clark. I'm super honored. I, I know we had uh, discussed maybe a possibility of uh, having an opportunity to do this. Uh, it's it's all, almost been a year almost. And um, so when I, when I got the call, I was like, oh, wow, it's... <laughs> This is awesome. So, um, yeah, like you said, you kind of hit some of the key points. Uh, just a little bit about about myself. Um, um, I was a, I'm a military brat, but you know, so my, my dad was in the military. I did have a chance to grow up in Belgium, uh, so I lived overseas for about 20 years. Um, I have uh, you know, I had a chance to learn different uh, learn a different language as well. And uh, I went to uh, I had the blessing or the opportunity to be. Uh, homeschooled, right? I did do some private or uh, private school as well, as well as a, um, a chance to, uh, because I, I was I was really wanting to play sports. And the only way to do that was to, of course, do uh, public school, uh, but it was a military DOD school. So we did actually get two um, diplomas. So I got one for high school and one for the uh, for the department for Dodds, Department of uh, Defense, uh, you know, as well for them. So the cool thing about our school was we had different sections. So we were in the American section, but if you wanted to learn French, you would just take a trip down the hall to the French section, to the German section, to the you know Italian section. So we were able to go to different sections and kind of, as soon as you crossed through those doors, it was like entering a whole nother country, no English was spoken. So that whole immersion in that language was really cool. Um, okay. And so I had a chance to, uh, to work. I had my first job at the age of 13. Um, you know, of course, uh, we're going to start. I started off a uh, cart boy, you know, carrying carts. That's another big thing I'm real passionate about. I don't like seeing carts in the parking lot because <laughs> I'm like, man, you know, that's it's just it's so easy to get rid of them. Uh, and also, uh, mm -hmm. I, I found that is not a degrading job. But one of the we, we, I was the first line of uh, customer service that they saw. So before you even enter into the, the, the store itself. Um, the cart people, you know, nowadays they just stand behind and they walk behind with that little remote. I, but, uh, remote we didn't have to see, that. Yes. <laughs> I had a rope that I would tie to the first cart, then I would shove all the other carts in front of it. And I would use that rope to steer it. Okay. And um, you know, and I and I always was talking, and I used it as a chance to work out too, because I was on a football team. So I said, Man, I'm gonna get strong and push these carts like like they were another opponent. Mm -hmm. And um, so I would always go to the furthest point and get all of those cards and pull them. And of course, that way, every time I'm getting, I'm always working my way back towards the store. So each uh, each trip would have been shorter. So I've always had a kind of a mindset for that. Uh, I, I was recently diagnosed with ADHD, which explains a whole lot now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so great. I do. So uh, that's actually one of the, the, just a little bit about my background. And then, of course, um, you know, finishing, uh, I was able to finish high school at around 16, 16 and a half, 17. Um, and so started college, uh, the University of Maryland overseas campus. And then, um, you know, when I had the chance to uh, to spread my wings, my parents were uh, allowed me to go to college in, uh, in Florida, in Pensacola Christian, and I uh, finished up my degree there. And then, uh, you know, a couple of years later, about maybe 10 or so years later, I did, I had a, I had a chance to go back to uh, do another degree um, after I had fallen off of a, um, a building and it was like two stories hit the man. So, and I, and I almost, and I destroyed my hand. So I said, God, if you give me the chance to use my hand again, I'm going to go back and, and learn music. So that was my secondary degree. I went back and learned music uh, and I minored in, um, um, piano, so voice is my is my uh, my my, prof my is my proficiency, um, but I also play the piano and had a chance to uh, to get a degree in nonprofit organizational uh, management as well. 
So, cause I was just really passionate about the nonprofit sector, um, being a part of it myself. So, uh, that's, uh, just, that's just a few things about it. And then I, I got the chance to come back and teach, um, and be the principal at, uh, Calvary's Harvest Christian Academy. And the cool thing about that was I had already done most of that curriculum as, as a, as a young, as a youngster myself, cause the curriculum is over almost 60 years old. So, uh, you know, that, that company has been around and they, they've been, they've been providing this and it's a perfect, uh, uh, you know, curriculum because there's a lot of people who are on the move. So it's, it's based and built for homeschooling so that parents can engage and work with their students as well. So it's got score keys and all that stuff. So it's very kind of minimal, um, shall I say, uh, it's, it's minimal when it comes down to the ability to, to, to process it into and it's very repeatable. And it's all based on mastery. If you get to a certain level, you've mastered, you can move forward. So uh, that was a really awesome. cool thing. Awesome. All right. So that you you just walked us right into a smooth flow into what we're really going to get uh, into is uh, improvement in education. Uh, you have a great curriculum. And in talking to you and actually coming over and witnessing some of the work that you do, it is very, very encouraging. So I'm going to let you kind of change your uh, topic and let's just talk a little bit about education. Education. Well, um, uh, education is something that's near and dear to my heart because I love learning things. Uh, and I, I like finding things that I don't know so that I can learn more about them. So, um, and that's a really uh, cool process that we have here at our school. Um, and, we, and instead of all of the students facing forward and I'm teaching one subject to every single person, all of our students that you, when you visited, where you are able to see that they had their own office. We have offices, not which is a desk, but it's more in a cubicle style, which also the partitions are one of the key things that we use to minimize distractions. But we also give the students uh, another level of responsibility. We allow them, once they've been taught the proper process how to do it, we allow them to actually grade or score their own work, but not the, the checkups and the tests, the teachers are still assessing to make sure that we score those so that the, the, we need to know where this child is. Uh, but uh, they have a, a it's called, I call them quests, not even checkups or, 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 you know, it's a checkup, but I call them quests. So it's a quiz and a test, but it's a journey to find out what we know, what we don't know. And uh, that's the best part. It's not just knowing if you know it, you know it, but if you don't know it and you know that you don't know it, Right. Now we know what we need to what we need to learn and what we need and how we need to grow. So that is another cool thing that allows the students a little bit of a opportunity to have some responsibility. Now, as as always, there are some times where uh, the the student will think that nobody's watching and they'll try to oh it's right when it's not right. But right. we do we do we audit their work regularly. To catch that in the beginning, first of all, it's a character thing. So we actually have another thing that we also uh, try to instill, which is character traits, honesty, integrity, um, um, you know, uh, working hard, um, uh, sometimes just being um, um, humble enough to understand that, man, I don't know, and I need to know. And, uh, you know, there's always going to be somebody who knows a little more than you, and that's okay. And, that and sometimes okay. we found out that person could be younger than you. Mm -hmm. And so we allow the students to, first of all, assess, uh, we, we give an assessment, we allow them to take stock in what they know about themselves. And that kind of brings me to the uh, time of the topic that I'm really passionate about is the IEP, uh, sort of, I would say stigma, okay. how it has negative stigma in both, the, not just the students' uh, eyes, sometimes when they give, I'm put on an IEP and I'm, I'm not allowed to be with these, or I got to do this and this and this. No, I'm a personal believer that everyone, once corporate and collective learning is done in the classroom, once the teacher packs up their stuff and goes off to their office, drives home, and you now, who is around to help me remember, to help me recall, to help me, uh, you know, recalibrate the thinkings that I, uh, and the teachings that I've received? Well, you are. And I, I'm, a, I'm a huge proponent of classwork. Um, I tell people, oh, guys, you have your own homework. It's called chores, right? You can go mm -hmm. watch some videos, cut some grass. Um, and, and again, and then showing them how that these daily chores can also uh, um, grow the skills that they're, they're learning in, 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 uh, in school. Um, I like to encourage the, the parents all the time, hey, take your kids shopping with you. Have them, uh, give them the receipt and let them see what was spent. 
and and then how to break that down. Um, when you're going home watching a movie or film, or uh, make sure you put those captions on so that they can see the words that they're hearing. Uh, when you play in games, show them how uh, how percents work. I said, guys, just take the pearl off, and it just makes sense. It's nothing but change. And literally, it's nothing but quarters, dimes, and nickels. It's not even a whole dollar. Don't be scared. It's okay. Calm down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I, I do like the fact that you incorporated uh, citizenship, uh, functional activities into your curriculum. A lot of times, schools keep it, uh, unless there are units that, that specializes in those particular uh, disabilities or whatever, then you will probably have more functional skills. But you have incorporated citizenship and functional skills into your academic curriculum. That is awesome. And another cool thing is we do is we let them take ownership and, and take pride in their school. This is, I said, guys, this is like your house, your school, your desks. I said, so at the end of the day, before dismissal, we have a, each student is assigned a, a specific cleaning task. So everyone has to clean their desks off and make sure that it's, it's, it's picture perfect and ready for the next day. We set ourselves up for success by preparing ourselves for the next day. We have goal cards, which are very, they're all daily done. And, and again, as long as you complete your goals for the day. There's no homework. This, I, so you got plenty of homework at home. Your parents are probably going to have a chore for you. So, so, but then they'll take turns cleaning the restrooms. So that also, when everybody's got a chance to do it, that also minimizes the amount of things that they do in the restrooms that'll cause them to, because we don't have janitors. I said, guys, we don't need a janitor uh, because it, it's this is, you don't have a janitor at your house. I said, no, because this is, we want you to take pride in where you're at. Um, gentlemen, tuck those clothes in, open those doors for the young ladies. Young ladies, carry yourself with a, with, with a, with a, a demeanor that, is, that, that commands respect. And then at the end of the day, always make sure, almost a, even in food service, we used to have that mop up, mop your way out. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I go clean as you go. I said, if you got time to lean, you got time to clean. That's the real deal. So we yeah. don't have no cell phones either on the floor and no cell phones in our classroom unless, now sometimes we'll bring the cell phone out and we'll do a challenge. I'll say, guys, I challenge you. I can, and I'll take paper and pencil. I'll give you your cell phone and we'll see who's faster at a certain task. And then I try to show them that the cell phone is more, it can be used as an amazing tool. People make hundreds of thousands of dollars, millions on their cell phones because they, but again, if you don't know how to use the tool, then it's a problem. Same thing with a calculator. I said, no, 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 your, your calculator is not broke. I said, did you get hurt? Is something wrong? Well, right, let me check you. Your arms are, I said, yeah, you're the calculator. It is a device that you use to calculate. Just like I used to tell my dishwashers. I said, the dishwasher's broke, Mr. Lance. I said, oh, no, are you okay? I checked. I said, you got to go to the hospital? I said, no. Oh, you mean the dishwashing machine is broke? I said, because you're the dishwasher. So <laughs> I'll put in a, a maintenance request. Go grab that soap and those brushes and those those scouring pads, and you get to bust the no suds. Okay. <laughs> so but, how do you do for the cleaning? Is it a rotation style or... They select it or they volunteer. How do you do that? So oh, it is it is selected. We do select the each student and we and we do rotate. So girls, the girls of course clean the girls' bathroom. Guys of course clean the guys' bathroom. Um, then we'll take turns who's going to vacuum one half of the classroom and the other half in the hallways and stuff like that. But there are some who are like principal lands. I would really. Uh, I, the bathroom was this way, and I, I I want the bathroom. Why? Because there's I love it when neat freaks jump into the classroom and they're like, "This one's like I can't do it. I I want to clean it so that I can use it." And then so so then that also challenges them to. I'll say, "So do you have an announcement?" Yes, I have an announcement. There's some people who are utilizing too much toilet. The toilet papers are missing. Just let someone know so that we can re so we can restock those things. Stop putting water in the soap dispenser because it doesn't enhance the cleaning power. It just it just dilutes the soap. Can we? So they'll actually take they'll take ownership of that. And then sometimes it's like, uh -uh, guys, don't mess with the bathroom. Why? Because this student has has requested that. And uh, now sometimes she'll share. She'll say, okay, well, I want this person to come in the bathroom and then I'd like to show them how how we like, because we also have the uh, administration who'll come in and check in the mornings and the afternoons. And then they'll, uh, on, the, on the PA system, say, hey guys, man, I came through there and man, that place is looking good. 
Or, or sometimes say, hey, kids, I went by your desk and it looked like there was a few crumbs. We don't want the ants to come marching one by one. So let's make sure that we do that. And, you know, we keep what I, I, I'm a, I'm, I want to be a comedian one day. So I keep <laughs> you know, all of them what I do because I like to keep the fun in the fundamentals. Absolutely. Um, absolutely. If you're laughing, you're learning. Um, if you're loathing, it's hard to learn when you loathe something. I tell them, guys, there's a lot of things that I dislike. Mm -hmm. But the one thing I dislike more than anything is not knowing how to do something when I have the opportunity to learn. And we are here to help you. And we are here to, to enhance what you don't know. And we want to be able to give you skills, not just teaching them a subject, math or science, but teaching them how to learn. Because if, the, if you know how to read, you know how to count, you know how to process information, there's nothing you can't learn. I mean, I, I've been to YouTube University and graduated with honors. I'm just letting people know. <laughs> so, <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> you can watch it. And then I always tell them, incorporate as many of the senses as possible. So if you're learning a memory passage, put a hand just so there's two things that need to be done. So if we're doing a, a memory passage or a verse or something like that, I tell them, in, in stand up. And, and I said, incorporate a pantomime something or um, use use different things. So visually, audibly, um, what you say. And I say, sometimes I said, sometimes you guys are magicians, your hands quicker than the eye. You're, that's why we have no erasers left on the top of the pencil. But I said, I like the fact that there's no, that your eraser is worn down to a nub because that means corrections are happening. Mm -hmm. And you're, yes. um, so I, that's why we have, a, we keep those pink pet little erasers handy because it's done in pencil, guys. We can fix it. It's not the end of the world. And sometimes it happens where they fail a test. And again, this is nothing to our, our, our grading skills a little different. So anything below an 80 for us is considered an F. An 80 is a D. But when it transfers, of course, it transfers to any other location, school, whatever, it does transfer to Bs and Cs and all those other things. So we want to make sure they know that we just we're, we're setting the bar a little higher so that as you reach it, even if you fall slightly below it, you're still on par with where you need to be. So we kind of we kind of push a little bit more just to make sure. Now, and if it, there is a failure, I tell them guys, it happens. I said, failing something does not make you a failure. Absolutely. What it does is it teaches you exactly what you don't know. And once you know that, I said, we, we may have them repeat the end. We don't just repeat the test. We repeat the entire uh, packet of work from start to finish. And I tell them, guys, that is not a punishment. It is a process. So as long as you don't see it as a punishment, but it is the part of the process, and that process is going to make it. I know it takes a little longer, but like good roast on a Sunday, it's been sitting in that crock pot for three, four, five hours. Been... <laughs> the flavors are getting in there much, much going to be much, much better by the time you get over to the the rest of it, but uh, it's, it's it's incredible how I'm listening to you. And again, you 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 talked about the functionality. You talked about the academics. You talked about the accountability. You talked about uh, responsibility. Um, I just think you have kind of covered so many aspects of learning that I, I I have to ask, do you all have state uh, testing at all? We do. As a matter of fact, um, now here's the deal. Um, we do not use the Georgia one. We use the Iowa testing, which is more the nationwide one, to, uh, so that we can get a, a great assessment, not just how they how they rank, and I even I can even say rank, because anytime we get into that, we, we, we turn school into a competition. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that learning should be a competitive sport. Mm -hmm. I think learning should be a collaborative sport yeah. because, uh, and then again, uh, so so we do Iowa testing and the Iowa testing is based upon, of course, the, all the subjects that matter and, and making sure that they know how to read, uh, um, of course, reading, writing, arithmetic, but also processing of information. Um, when you read this, how much did you remember, retain, and are able to recall? So those are the that's the that's what I call the triple R effect. If you can, if you've read, if you've truly read it, mm -hmm. then you're 
people, and I said, sometimes you just need to remember how to reference it. Um, and remember, because there's no way that, and I tell them guys, stop trying to put this information in your head. There's not enough room up there. I said, the Bible, uh, the Bible talks about that we, these things we have learned in our heart. I said, so think about it. When you memorize something, they say, I know it by heart. Right. Know by heart. <laughs> so I want you to filter it through your head, but it needs to be in your heart. Absolutely. And that way, if it's something that's in your heart, I'm passionate about it. I'm going to learn it. I'm going to do it, whether I'm the best at it or not. I'm just going to continue on because it's in my heart. And that and motivation is there. And I think even in sports, they say, man, this kid may not be the, the most talented on the team, but he plays with heart. Yes, yes. Awesome, Mr. Bennett. Awesome. I, 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 our time is, uh, I hate to say almost up because uh, I, I, I'm, I'm enjoying this. Uh, I, I, I tell you, you got me over here stuttering. <laughs> it got, uh -huh. It's so refreshing to hear about quality education. And I, I, I love it. I love it. I, I definitely do want to have you back. Um, I'm speaking so fast. I had to say that last night. I was like, okay. Uh, the other night I was interviewing, and I'm, I, you know, I, my, my mind is going because I be, I get so excited. I love this. This is my passion. I believe this is my ministry because everybody has a story, and when you can hear somebody's story help somebody else, that's the greatest part of this. And oh. to hear what you are talking about when it comes to educating our students, helping them to become productive people in society, but not only that, but to build their character in the process. And I think that's a lot what is missing is that our children characteristics are not being horned in on so that they can be great citizens. You know, because we kind of allow social media and all this other stuff raise our children. So it is so great. I, I, I would love to have, have you on again when you have the time uh, so you can tell me about, because we didn't get into the IEP portion, uh, but I, this was just great. So the next time I have you on, we'll talk a little bit more about special education and how that plays a pivotal role in your school as well. Outstanding. And I'm looking forward to it. And like I said, I'll also, I'll have those notes from uh, my interview with uh, Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Cheryl Long, again, who has really changed the game at her school and really interactively built in some awesome processes, even using AI and stuff like that to help, um, you know, uh, to help just kind of cultivate the, the learning uh, process for the IEP students. And like I said, I'll say this and I'll end with this. I think everyone I think everyone needs their own specific IEP. Parents shouldn't be afraid of it. Get that, get your kid uh, observed to understand what's going on so that you can be part of the learning process, but everyone should have an IEP. Everyone should That's have right. one. It's only an individualized learning plan. That's all it really is. Uh, edu an individual <laughs> education program for, for and it's yours. It's, it, you know, it's not catered to the rest. It's only tailored to you. So I absolutely agree. But can you, uh, that was a great takeaway, but if you were to say something to the audience right now um, that will leave them thinking about what you have said here today, what would that be? The one thing I try to let, I, I think would really be, an, a, hopefully be a huge encouragement is, um, Learning in and of itself needs to be, it needs to be a, a lifelong legacy. It needs to be something you're doing for the rest of your life. Uh, learning should be a process that you should in, embrace and engage in literally and, until your last breath is taken because um, you, that's the best thing you could actually do for yourself. Uh, they always say teaching yourself a new skill produces the same amount of endorphins as eating a piece of chocolate is running, is working out. <laughs> yourself is literally better than a, than a massage or, or a good haircut. It's, it's really the, it's the, it's pampering the soul. And, uh, and then again, of course, lastly, I would just say, keep, keep, if anybody doesn't agree with this, and I, I apologize, but keeping God close in your life, oh, um, here to help you, 
um, uh, and he's always, he never leave you nor forsake you. And God is, uh, the, he knows all, sees all, created all. There's nothing that he doesn't know. And so he is, should be your ultimate teacher. Um, scriptures are awesome. Uh, school books are awesome. But the ultimate school book I would use is, is scripture and keeping God in your life uh, and, and learning as much as possible from whoever and wherever you can. That's a positive, influential source, because there's so many things that you can learn that are the wrong things. And I would just I would just end with that. Just keep learning, even sometimes learning what not to do. That's super important. Uh, uh, you, you all heard it here. It could not have gotten any better. I, I, I love that. I'm definitely going to have Mr. Bennett back on with the exceptional talk with Dr. Clark. Have a great day, Mr. Bennett. A pleasure. Thanks so much for having me. Bye-bye. Mm -mm.